contenders, I just have one thing to say. Losing is not in my vocabulary. Today in American Gladiators, Gemini and company prepare to face a brand new core of contenders. Robert Batman Bender, he can bench press 375 pounds. But will muscle alone be enough to make mince meat out of our gladiators? Bender faces Connecticut gym owner Kevin Cleary. In the women's matchup, opposites collide. All business Angela Shepard, one of LA's toughest cops, faces our own class clown and resident Trekkie, AJ Perling of Minneapolis. I've only got impulse power, but I'll give you all I got, because I'm not going to let my dilithium crystals blow. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gladiator Arena in Los Angeles, California. Here are your American Gladiators. Ice, Gemini, Diamond, Thunder, Zap, Laser, Gold, Nitro, Flame, and Turbo. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the American Gladiator. Let the game Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, and welcome to another season of American Gladiators. Actually, our second season as we begin another set of preliminary rounds. Once again, the contenders we've selected from our nationwide tryout, outstanding as far as athleticism is concerned, and they'll be vying for $175,000 in cash and prizes. That includes a brand new car, plus, of course, a shot at our grand championship. My co-host, once again, NFL Hall of Famer Larry Zonka, and he's with a man who is really ready to go. He's the Gladiator team captain, Gemini. Larry? Gemini, first show of the second half. You've doled out a lot of punishment, but you've also had to take a little. How's the body holding up? Oh, it's holding up real good, Larry. I think the important thing for the bigger guys like myself is to stay loose, stretch a lot. I did a lot of that during the offseason, so I'm feeling real good. Good enough. Back to you, Mike. And Larry, the contenders here in this new season are gunning for a spot in the Grand Championship. The men will meet first half champion Marco Ortega. The women will go on to meet our first half champion, Kimberly Lance. Robert Bender and Kevin Cleary set to go for Powerball. And also set to go are our gladiators. They're pumped up and ready for the beginning of our second season. And what a way to kick off, Powerball. Larry, it's like a slap in the face and a cup of hot coffee. The adrenaline kicks in in a hurry. Hungry to do battle with our two contenders, our trio of gladiators, yeah. Gemini, it, Turbo, and Laser. The gladiators look hungry for action. Robert Batman Bender comes to us from Bartow, Florida, woodcutter by profession, claims to be an Eddie Murphy lookalike, a childhood hero. He's going to go up against Kevin Cleary from Bethel, Connecticut. He's an owner of a health club. Kevin's extremely strong, did 27 pull-ups in 30 seconds. Scoring for this Powerball match, goals in the outer cylinder were two points, a goal in the center cylinder were three, and Powerball brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Now you're playing with power, Ready? super power. Great move on Gemini, slid by Laser, just couldn't get the ball in the oh. Bender going one-on-one -on -one with Gemini. Gemini sends him out of bounds. Now Bob oh. trying to get past Turbo, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Kevin trying to use a little power on Gemini, and Gemini said, uh-uh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Larry, one interesting thing to note, uh, the evolution of the Gladiators' yeah. tactics over the years. They've really got this down to a science power ball. Well, you've got Gemini floating in the middle, going to where the action is all the time. Makes for a two-on-one confrontation as often as not. Kevin with one last desperate attempt as time runs down. Robert Bender knocked out of bounds, and guess what? The Gladiators have done it. Shutout time. Well, Turbo has every right to be excited. What a great way to open up with a shutout. <laughs> Kevin Cleary finds out about it right here. Here, Gemini invites Bender into the middle of he and Laser, and he pays the price. Pays the price again when Turbo wraps him up. Contenders, you can run, but you can't hide. Now, these men both have excellent clicks, but the Gladiators gave them no room to run. Yeah, 
All right, the women are set to enter the Powerball Arena. You see our Gladiators 3, Zap, Gold, and Diamond, AJ Perling, and Angela Shepard about to deal with our blonde bombshells. AJ comes to us from Minneapolis, Minnesota, has some background in marathon running, has a very outgoing personality, says her heroes are stand-up comedians. Her competition, Angela Shepard, a police officer from Chino, California. Angela, very strong in the upper body, but a little slow afoot. Ready? up A.J. Perling as uh, Angela tries to roll one in there. And Zap rolls her away. That move worked good, very nice well. Nice move by uh, Angela there past Diamond. A.J.'s move worked very well early on, but she's gone to the well once too often. Oh! And she's robbed. Very deceptive, A.J. Perling wins this match of Powerball 6-2. A.J., much to my surprise, with the great moves early on, makes a couple of tough scores. She's tricky. And watch Diamond swallow this move, hook, line, and sinker. No wonder it was so much fun, A.J. That was easy. Great fun and a lot more fun to come for gladiators and contenders alike. Up next, Hang Tough. After one event of this preliminary round, A.J. Perling leading Angela Shepard 6-2. Hang Tough is the event right now. Angela on the platform first. Here our contenders have 60 seconds to make it across a grid of 55 rings. Angela will have to deal with Zap and the crowd behind her. If the contenders can make it over to the Gladiators platform in 60 seconds or less, they'll earn 10 points. They hang tough for the entire 60 without being pulled off, they'll earn five. And they're on their way. You know, Mike, when they first start, the contenders first start, you can see how relaxed the strong upper body people are on the rings. Angela and it, decides that that outside line is not a smart idea because Zap is following that. She's kind of waiting for Zap to get herself in trouble. Go. One, two, three. Larry Thompson orders her to move. She's peering back over her shoulder trying to determine which way Zap's going so she can pick a course. It's all right for a contender to move backwards just as long as at some point, after about three or four seconds, they try to make a move advancing towards the Gladiators platform. Angela's got it going now, but Zap right there with a hand. Angela's now, now, now. past Zap. If she can, now. She's getting, she's got seven seconds left, Larry. Whoa. Oh, she's got an armload of Zap, too. <laughs> two, she's gonna get the draw, though. She's got the draw. Zap almost had to draw a string in the bottom half of Angela's uniform, but she hangs on for five points. Angela Shepard now has a 7-6 lead on AJ. AJ is up next. Angela tries to take the big gamble, tries to blow by Zap in a face-to-face -face confrontation. Zap says no way, gets a hold of her. But Angela hangs tough and picks up five points. And like Angela, AJ will draw Zap once again. AJ on her platform. Can't really tell if she's apprehensive or just relaxed here, Larry. That gal's fooled me once before. Ready? <laughs> AJ will try to swing past Zap. Again, there are 55 rings on this hang tough grid. Contenders have 60 seconds to swing across to the Gladiators platform. AJ said this will be her best event because she thinks she's a monkey. We'll see. <laughs> she's 
She's bold. I think she's also gone here. <laughs> this won't last long, unless AJ is much stronger than you and I can possibly imagine. 25 seconds left on the clock. Zap prime oh. hands off. Whoa. They okay? both landed upside down. I think both the Gladiator and AJ Perling are okay. Kind of has everybody grabbing their breath here. As you'll see both the Gladiator and the Contender take a headlong plunge. No time to react right into the mat. Be smart for both these gals to check in with our trainer, Tony Spino. Well, Larry, AJ looks like she's okay as she gives sort of a little wink to the crowd there. Laser is sending the platform now as the men are set to hang tough. Laser revving up the audience, and Robert Bender, the first contender to ascend the platform here. When he was a little kid, he used to run around his living room with a cape. His mom nicknamed him Batman. His mom was a big influence on Robert, but also he gets a lot of guidance from above. Robert Bender is an impressive physical specimen, but his true calling is a spiritual one. His choice was very tough. He's studying to be a pastor at the Florida School of Preaching. It's, it's what I have in my heart. It's a dream for me. But first things first, Robert, a power lifter, bench pressing up to 375 pounds, is banking on success in Gladiator Arena to pay his way through school. I'm a powerhouse. I can deal with the big guy. Well, he's got a big guy to deal with here in Laser. When you look at Robert, uh... He doesn't really look like he's as strong as what he is. Man's a power lifter and uh, three hundred and sixty pound bench press. Gets a lot of strength naturally too. He's a woodcutter down in Florida, so he swung a few axes in his time. Right now he's a confused woodcutter because he couldn't find one of those rings. <laughs> Laser zoomed in for the <laughs> for <takedown>. the kill. <laughs> Stripped him right off of there. Well, the first time that Batman meets up with a big guy, things don't go the way he would like. Laser makes short work of taking him off those rings. Kevin Cleary now ascending the Hang Tough platform. Again, neither contender has scored yet in this preliminary round matchup. Kevin will get his chance once again, like Robert Bender, against Laser. Again, the contenders have a grid of 55 Yay! rings to cross. Kevin not at home on the rings. Uh, you, know, you usually tell the first couple of rings that contender moves on whether he's at home on them or not. He's a little bit troubled by them. Larry Thompson counting our referee, telling Kevin he's got to move somewhere. Quite obvious from Kevin's performance that this event involves more than just upper body strength. Technique, very much a part of a success ratio factor here. There's Laser, he's got his arms around him, it's all over. So, they're still deadlocked. Goose at zero. eggs. <laughs> we talked a little bit about Kevin's upper body strength, which he has, but there's a rhythm that you have to hit on the rings, and he just hasn't hit it at all. Laser strips him right off. Well, maybe our contenders can hit their rhythm next because the joust is up. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, and there you see the score after, or lack of score after two events between Kevin Cleary and Robert Bender. The men now set to joust. Kevin Cleary ascending the platform first, and he has the dubious distinction of doing battle with one of the very best gladiators. His name is Gemini. Gemini getting on the platform right now, and there you see his record over the past few seasons here on the American Gladiators. And Gemini is the subject of today's Gladiator Moment. One of the competitors that really stands out in my mind is Eldon Kidd uh, on the joust. Uh, I jousted against him four times, lost to him all four times. But the second one was the most exceptional one because I felt the first one was somewhat of a fluke, and I felt I could come back and beat him, and I didn't. So it really surprised me. It was a really emotional time for me in the joust. But that's what the Gladiator is about. He was a very, very fine competitor, Eldon Kidd. Well, we know Gemini is a fine competitor, and Larry, you'd have loved Eldon Kidd. He was a wilderness guide, and he definitely wasn't intimidated by the Gladiators. Kevin Cleary here with a chance to earn 10 points. 
Kevin trying to fend off Gemini as best as he can. He's trying to keep that pugil stick up, and Kevin's facing falls across. So for Kevin Cleary, the drought continues. Three events and no score. And for a second there, Larry, I thought Kevin was going to try to tie Gemini's shoe. Not much of a, a battle. Not at all, Mike. Kevin having a lot of trouble just getting his pugil stick free. Actually gets off balance doing that and falls across. Well, Robert Bender is up next against Gemini. Maybe he can reverse this scoreless trend. We told you that he's studying to be a minister. A little pre-joust prayer here, perhaps. Well, he definitely needs some help from somewhere. He's got to come away from this event with some numbers on the board. And Gemini is going to make it extra tough. Kevin Cleary on the sidelines. They have no idea why he's smiling. On guard! Gemini with that first wicked hit. Oh! Takes it away! Robert Bender off balance, and somehow Gemini got his pugil stick tangled up with Robert. Robert used his leverage and wrested it out of Gemini's control to get the victory, and 10 huge points. Gemini relaxing for just a second, and Batman took advantage of it. And perhaps Ooh. Gemini fooled by Robert Bender's yeah, strength. Well, the women are up next. A.J. Perling about to ascend the platform for the joust. She trails Angela Shepard 7-6. And a rematch of sorts for A.J. because she faces Zap just like she did in Hang Tough. And let's go back to that Hang Tough match, Larry. Both women uh, almost sustained an injury. Well, the way they came off the rings might give them no opportunity whatsoever to prepare for the impact with a mat below. You'll see AJ take it head first. Zap gets bent over backwards, almost does a, a double fold up. A little woozy from that, but she's eager to compete. AJ was able to walk off the effects immediately after Hank Tough. Here she is in the joust. Her and Zap about to do hand to hand battle with pugil sticks. Whoa, roundhouse by Zap. AJ catches her off, oh, comes back around and peels her off the platform. Zap wanted to make that one short and sweet, Larry. She said, you gave me a headache, now I'm going to give you one. Angela Shepard up now in the joust, a chance to increase her lead over AJ. She leads right now 7-6. Like AJ, she'll draw a Zap in this event. Angela in the practice rounds did pretty well at the joust. We'll see how she does against the real thing, Zap. Took Zap only four seconds to knock, knock off AJ. Whoa! Oh, that, strategy. that same sneaky backhand <laughs> swipe. Gave the appearance that she wasn't even looking and then came around with a roundhouse. Angela a little stunned when she hit the mat. Trainers out there, fears that she's all right. You know, Zap had her head turned in the opposite direction, wasn't even looking at Angela Shepard, and then all of a sudden, wham. Wow, Larry, we felt that. No time for the contenders to rest, however. Atmosphere is next. Get in on the action and join the American Gladiators Fan Club. Send $3 check or money order to American Gladiators, Van Nuys, California, 91463-0001. Or pick up a fan club application from your local general nutrition center. We are halfway through our competition and in the women's preliminary round between Angela Shepard and A.J. Perling, pretty tight, very hotly contested 7-6 in favor of Angela. Uh, I like the grit of both these women. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest with you, Mike. I committed the ultimate sin. You know, AJ just didn't look like the kind of person who was gonna come out and score a lot of points to me. I commented earlier, and then I had to back up, had to eat my words. This gal's a jock now. She came to play. In the men's competition, Robert Bender has a 10-0 lead over Kevin Cleary. A little bit of a surprise, Larry, because we thought both men would score more. Robert joins us now from the contender's locker room. Uh, Finally, you got on the scoreboard, and you did so the hard way by beating Gemini in the joust, Robert. Yes. 
I, I had to do that because I really looked bad in the ring, so I had to make up for it. Well, you had super concentration. I saw your eyes closed. You were getting your focus all together yes. right before the start of that job. Yes, I was into it. I was pumped. <laughs> were you aware of Gemini's track record in that event? He's mighty good. I, I know, but I, I didn't. I really didn't care. I just went to win. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Thank Keep you. it going. Thank you. Well, the women will get it going now with Atlasphere. And for the gladiators inside their cages, it'll be Ice and Diamond. There's a look at Ice okay, inside of her Atlasphere. She's the female gladiator counterpart to Thunder. She will, she will rock you, and so will Diamond if she gets a chance. Angela Shepard loading into her Atlasphere. She's a member of the Los Angeles Police Department and competed in the world's toughest cop competition. AJ Perling crawling into her atmosphere. We'll see if all that background as a marathon runner helps her out in this event, Mike. Contenders have 60 seconds to score in one of four numbered scoring pods, each goal worth two points. And Atlasphere is brought to you by Twix Cookie Bars, now available in four great flavors, one of life's great kicks, Twix. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! Those atmospheres weigh twice as much as Angela and AJ, but they get them rolling. <laughs> Ice and <laughs> Diamond collide into one another. AJ's got the ball rolling, and she's moving towards scoring pod number three and scores. Each goal worth two points. Again, AJ. Now, she really is amazing. She weighs 120 pounds. That atmosphere, as you mentioned earlier, about 225, so. So she has to run literally up the side of the thing in order to get it moving. Right over pod number two. Now towards three. Can she get it over that sensor located in the middle of those scoring pods? No. Angela <laughs> says, <laughs> if I'm not going to score, neither are you. With eight seconds to go, breaks in the open. Can she roll down to pod number one? Does and gets the score with one second left. Three scores for A.J. Perling, a total of six points. None for Angela Shepard. So A.J. has now taken the lead after four events, 12-7. And she likes this spaceship. AJ, you continue to amaze us. You weigh 120 pounds. Those atmospheres weigh about 225. <laughs> How do you get them moving? Man, they come out of the ramps. They're at high speed anyway. It's just basically control. Getting your body where you want it to be to get the thing to turn. Control get and out of control because it has a mind of its own once it starts rolling. <laughs> there was about two or three times when you could have scored even more goals than you I did. Know. Well, hats up to these babies. They, uh, they didn't want me to go. <laughs> <laughs> nice effort. Thanks, guy. Larry, I love her attitude, and Robert Bender and Kevin Cleary would do well to adopt that attitude. They have to deal with laser and nitro in their version of atmosphere. Bender, of course, the first man to get on the scoreboard when he picked up 10 points in the joust. Kevin Cleary yet to score. Ready. Gladiators, ready! Here they go. <laughs> Expect some cosmic collisions. Laser Whoa. plays into Robert Bender. Kevin Cleary's got the breakaway after he slides past Nitro down towards scoring pod number three. He gets it to count. And Cleary bends his atmosphere a little bit with that collision with Nitro right off the bat. He's got a flat spot on one side of his atmosphere. So his personal scoring drought is over. Kevin's got another breakaway. Nitro hot on his tail. He scores again. Can he do it? No. Nitro says no way on number one, pal. 19 seconds left on the clock. Robert Bender in that yellow atmosphere trying to work his way past Laser. The Gladiators have the two contenders pinned. Down to seven seconds. So he's got a breakaway. Kevin, all he has to do is hit the sensor in the middle of the pod. He does. Three goals for Kevin Cleary with six points. Finally, he is on the scoreboard. 
Both men thoroughly exhausted after that 60-second workout. Kevin Cleary picked a great time to get things going because Robert Bender was shut out. Kevin with his breakaway move here, he has pretty good control, you know, for all the problems he had earlier on and hang tough. He's adopted well to the atmosphere. Up next for Kevin and Robert, the Mays. After four events in this women's preliminary, a low scoring affair between AJ Perling and Angela Shepard, and they are set now for event number five. The Mays are 40 by 80 foot labyrinth, dotted with gladiators, zap, diamond, blaze, and gold. And gold is the subject of our Ask a Gladiator segment. Byron Wozjin from Los Angeles, California writes, Dear Gold, I can't afford to go to the gym, but I have barbells and dumbbells. How should I proceed from here? Thanks for your letter, Byron. Yes, I am living proof that you can start weight training in your basement. Um, to do the basic exercises and cover the whole body, all you really need is a barbell and a couple of dumbbells. Um, I would suggest reading through several of the fitness magazines and pay close attention to the articles on diet because that is 50% of the weight training program, is diet. And good luck to you. And if you'd like to correspond with Gold or any of our other gladiators, write to Ask a Gladiator, 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90067. A.J. Perling and Angela Shepard set to go. Once again, the contenders have 45 seconds to make it through this maze. If they can do so in the allotted time first, They'll earn 10 points, five points for getting through seconds. I'll tell you what, Larry, AJ's so Get thin, it's quite ready. possible that she could work her way through this maze Gladiator. without the gladiators even ready. noticing her. Well, AJ makes short work of that possibility. She runs right into gold. Nope, not that way, AJ. Now they, they almost ran into each other. <laughs> Oh, there's Blaze. AJ found Blaze. Angela found Zap. Yep. Two or three times. Zap hot on her trail. Again, there are neutral zones that the Gladiators cannot go into. <laughs> and Angela Shepard will cross the finish line with room to spare. <laughs> and AJ's back at the beginning. Her quickness didn't help too much on this. Remember in Powerball it helped, but she just ends up right where she started from. Time runs out and A.J. Perling, as you mentioned, almost at the start line. Meanwhile, Angela Shepard has now taken the lead with the 10 points she picks up on the, in the maze. She leads now 17-12 after five events. And she won despite constant harassment from Zap. Nice job, Larry. Angela, you related this experience of going through the maze a little bit to some of your police background, like going through a dark house, following people with guns, and suddenly having a cat jump out at you. Was it like that? Exactly, exactly. You got to stay low, and you got to watch out what's, what's going on, what's going to jump out right in front of you. You got to react very quickly. Hey, if you'd like to be a member of our American Gladiators fan club, send $3 check or money order to American Gladiators Fan Club, Van Nuys, California, 91463-0001. Kevin Cleary and Robert Bender about to attack this maze. Robert with a 10-6 lead. A chance for both men to pick up 10 or five points. That is providing they get through Turbo, Laser, Thunder, and Nitro. Our Gladiators four. Again, the contenders have 45 seconds to find a solution through this maze. The man who does it first in the 45-second time limit earns 10 points. Boom, there's Nitro. <laughs> he right finds in both contenders' faces. And now Turbo. But Robert Bender moving his way quickly through the maze. Look out, there's Laser. Boom, one almost slips by, Laser. Now here comes Kevin Cleary. Is he going the right way or the wrong way? He'll know when he meets up with the... Uh... Well, they're right behind one another. They both get through in under 45 seconds. Kevin did it first to earn 10 points. Robert did it second to earn five. Well, it's tough enough to try to figure your way through the maze, but how about when you collide with every gladiator along the way? As both our contenders meet up with Nitro and then Turbo, 
And that was just the beginning of their problems, Larry. Once they got by those two gentlemen, here was Laser first hitting Robert Bender. And then he hits Kevin Cleary. And once they figured out that this way wasn't going to be productive, they went in another direction. And guess who was waiting in the wings? Thunder wasn't in perfect position, but he was there long enough to give Robert Bender a shot he won't forget for a while. How about a hand? Uh-uh, nothing doing. I'm going to get you next to the wall. <laughs> After five events, A.J. Perling trails Angela Shepard 17-12 as the women are now set to scale our 32-foot wall. A look from high above. And this can be a very daunting experience if you've never done it before. Angela and AJ set to go. They're harnessed up. The contender's given a 10 second head start following Angela up the wall. Diamond, she's always dangerous in this event. Interesting to see whether Angela lets that affect her when she hears that gladiator hit the wall behind her 10 seconds after she begins. AJ Perling studying the wall, plotting her course. Plays is the gladiator that's going to follow AJ up the wall. Last event before the eliminator, the wall most important. Chance for a contender to pick up 10 points if they can make it up the wall in 60 seconds or less. Ready? Angela talking about fear being a motivator, having that gladiator right on your heels, and she's got one. Blaze wasting no time pulling AJ off, and look at Diamond, down goes Angela. That was a fast 10 seconds. So Angela and AJ both get shut out. The score remains the same, 17-12. And going into the eliminator, Angela Shepard will get a 2.5 second head start. Hey, that's a big mountain. It's a short climb. Let's do it. Come on, come on. Gladiators plotting their strategy, pumping up for this men's wall. Big opportunity for our two contenders to pick up some points right before that last event. Kevin Cleary leads Robert Bender by a slim one point. And sort of a bad draw for them because both Laser and Turbo are very good. Very good. This has been a tough competition for both these fellows. Not really many points scored. Turbo looks like he's going to borrow Nitro's climbing shoes for this particular Dedicated venture. To all the hardworking people in Montana. This mountain. Yeah. Laser says he's going to go up the mountain just like back in Montana. Maybe a pair of golf shoes would work a little better. What do you think? <laughs> Robert Bender not worried about the gladiator. Contenders are given a 10 second head start. Ready! Both contenders are chalked up with magnesium carbonate to get a better grip, and they're on their way. Kevin Cleary and Robert Bender. Kevin training intensely for just this moment, and he is doing a good job. Here comes Turbo, who tries one single bound to reach Robert Bender. Kevin Cleary has the lead. He's got a good grip on things. Looks like he may well do what he boasts. Oh, he's got both hands on one grip. He's in a pinch. Robert Bender reaching up, closing the gap a bit. Plenty of time left on the clock. Laser, it up. Kevin's going to get there first. He's up there. Man of his word. Yes. <laughs> He'll get the 10 points. And so with that man attain the top, he's going to pick up five in the process. Kevin says good job, and he did a pretty good job himself right here. Both hands on one grip. Overcomes that obstacle not once, but twice. Does a good job of getting to the top. And Kevin now has taken a 26-20 lead, which means going into the final event, he'll have a three-second head start. That's the differential that Robert Bender, Batman, will have to make up. We'll have that as American Gladiators continues right after this. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. You know, through six events, Angela Shepard and A.J. Perling have gone back and forth. 
At this moment in time, Angela has a five-point lead over AJ. And again, to reacquaint you with the scoring format in the Eliminator, each point is worth one half second in time, meaning that Angela has a 2.5 second head start. But right now, Larry's at the start line with AJ Perling. AJ, I got my arm around you, and you are virtually vibrating. You're ready to go. That two and a half seconds doesn't mean a thing to you, does it? Not a thing. I'm coming out of here like a cannon, like a cannon. Well, we're going to let you do it. We're going to get out of your way. Good luck. Larry, despite being shut out of four of the previous six events, I sure love AJ's grit and determination. No gladiator's going to stop her. Unless, however, she falls off the handbike, then she would be detained for 10 seconds by either Zap or Blaze. Now on the tower above the final straightaway, two more gladiators, Diamond and Ice. These two women, Larry, very evenly matched. AJ won Powerball, Angela won Hang Tough, and won the maze. AJ won Atlasphere. Well, now we... the Eliminator will decide everything. Well, we've got a scrapper in AJ, and Angela, we may have the world's toughest cop. You know, Angela Shepard never made it up the treadmill during the practice session, so that is a monumental conquest for her. That's got to give her a big psychological edge as AJ goes down. And remember, the contender must stay down in that pit for 10 seconds. She'll be retained there, detained there rather, by the gladiators. But Angela has given AJ a shot because she's fell off those spinning cylinders. A lot depends on this spinning log for AJ. She makes it. They're even. We look there, perhaps for a moment, that uh, Angela might be running out of steam, but she has regained control, trying to get up that cargo net. Two tough contenders. AJ Perling. We'll see how tired her arms are. It may cost her a little bit on trying to get over these walls as she drops off the line. Here comes Angela. Oh, and she landed hard. AJ Perling over the first wall. But Angela Shepard wincing in pain. Meanwhile, AJ Perling with the lead. Going up the two walls. AJ laboring over that second wall. Takes the ball over the final hurdle and through the tape. She will go on to the second round, but AJ, of course, unaware of what happened to her. Female counterpart, Angela Shepard, she's down right now. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Angela's injury notwithstanding, this is really where AJ took over. She darts across the spinning cylinder and then overtakes Angela on the cargo nets. Larry? AJ, at this point, unbeknownst to you, Angela appears to have suffered some degree of injury dropping off the line. Oh, man, I hope she's okay. She's a, she's a scrapper, too. Well, we certainly wish her the best, but at the same time, we've got to acknowledge the fact that you've been a scrapper all day, and you've managed to win this thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm real happy about it. And all I can say is, I want to play Powerball again. Well, congratulations. You've won, and you move on to the next round. Mike? Larry, this is how Angela Shepard was injured on the zip line. A contender ideally supposed to take the force of the landing on her backside. Instead, Angela took all the force in her knee and her ankle. She is still down. AJ rushing to her side to offer some comfort. Our trainers, Eric Landswick and Tony Spino, attending to her. Let's hope she's all right. Gemini now carrying Angela off to the locker room. You can see that it looks to be her left ankle right now. And she'll be getting some expert medical attention. The men's eliminator is next, and you know after a slow start, both Robert Bender and Kevin Cleary have come on like gangbusters. Now their final test. Kevin leads Robert by six points, which means he'll get a three-second head start in this event. Can the Batman overcome that difference? Larry's with him at the start line. Batman, are you ready to swoop? Does that three seconds bother you? I, I got to move. I came here to win, and I, and I have a lot of fans here rooting me on. 
I got to do it. You've been smiling all day. We hope you keep on. Right, Joe. Good luck. Smiling and the preacher to be saying his prayers, hoping that he can pull this victory out against Kevin Cleary. Underneath the hand bike, ready to impose a seven second penalty should they fall, the contenders, Thunder and Nitro, and on the tower, above the final straightaway, Laser and Gemini. Robert Bender up to treadmill quickly, trying to regain the three seconds he lost at the start, but look at Kevin Cleary fly. Both these fellas are literally flying through the eliminator. Robert Bender right on his heels. Again, it could be how quickly they get up the cargo net. Robert Bender, the Batman, hand over hand. Kevin Cleary at the top of the platform first. He'll go down the zip line first. There he goes. Here comes Robert Bender. Kevin Cleary. Over the, over first, the first wall. Over the first wall with ease. Now the second. Comes the ball. He's through. Over the last hurdle. Through the tape. Kevin Cleary advances to the second round. Robert Bender right behind. Kevin Cleary, you promised us the wall at the top of the show. You delivered. You didn't say anything about the Eliminator. You just went out and did it. Fine race. Thanks, Larry. This guy is a heck of a competitor. He's incredible. Well, you both did a fine job going through that Eliminator, and I got to tell you one thing. Congratulations and welcome to the next round. Thanks, Larry. Mike. Thanks. Congratulations indeed, Larry. You see our two new Members of the second round, A.J. Perling and Kevin Cleary. And our congratulations to Robert Bender. He turned in a wonderful effort. And also an update on the condition of our police officer, Angela Shepard. She is okay, just a slight ankle sprain. We congratulate her as well. Coming up next week, more exciting preliminary round action on the American Gladiators. For now, that's it from Gladiator Arena. For Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Gatley saying so long.